today, folks, as we've done every week on this channel since, what, 2018, we're going to be diving into my $440,000 Canadian uh, dividend stock portfolio, primarily focusing on some Q&As, TikTok, YouTube. So many of you are kind of repeating these questions that I find intriguing from, you know, tax benefits here in Canada to, you know, some of these ETFs and so much more in between. So that's a conversation you'd appreciate in return. I always ask that you hit that like button because this has been a wild week in the market. I feel like we're starting to flip into this new uh, reality because before it was if you post posted bad earnings, your stock got devastated. If you posted good earnings, your stock still went down. Now bad earnings are good earnings because markets have been exploding when you're looking at things like Metastock, uh, Amazon, Microsoft, all these stocks have been rallying pretty aggressively on the earnings post. And again, I don't know if this is the sign of a bottoming of the market, considering October was the market lows and people are saying, well, they're not done raising interest rates, so the market couldn't have bottomed yet. But history doesn't repeat it. Historically seems to rhyme. And I'm not going to speculate on the past and just continue to kind of cost average moving forward into this market and taking a look at the portfolio. Again, guys, we're just under uh, $401,000. Um, it's been pretty much flat uh, since I kind of readjusted last year into a bunch of these ETFs that I continue to cost average average into, but I'm more or less fixated on cash right now. I'm giving my portfolio strategy up into the income comes in and I'm putting about a 50-50 split between the market and cash because perhaps I want to save up, uh, you know, buy a house sometime in the future here. But one stock that I've been cost averaging into and it's going to be the new proponent of the portfolio is XIC, this broader Canadian ETF. As mentioned, I really like this structure of basically one broad-based ETF like VOO and XIC and then pair it with a dividend ETF like SCHD and VDY. And that's kind of giving me this really healthy balance it's taking out a lot of the volatility of the portfolio and it's benefiting me uh, fairly greatly from the dividend income standpoint getting about 3.41 percent here 13,600 and a good portion of this cash is just sitting in high interest savings making me you know 367 dollars in annual income which is pretty nice as well but nonetheless if you do uh, want to support the channel here guys because we're going to talk about these individual investments and some of these q a's but first uh, you can head on over to portfolio spreadsheet.com you can get the same portfolio tracker here and one for each platform just by purchasing one, you can use coupon code dividends. You'll get, I think, 30% off. I can't remember what the discount was, but I also sell uh, personal finance trackers sold separately where you can actually track your income and expenses and see what you're putting away and the percentage of savings that you personally have. I really love these trackers because you can use them on your phone and so much more in between. But let's get into this with first and foremost, the performance of VOO this year. So since the year, guys, the VOO is now up 8.83%. Since the October lows, as mentioned, you know, right around the bottoming of the market is up about 16%. I hope the market pulls back. I'm not going to speculate on it as mentioned, but I mean, the markets are up 16% uh, on VOO, which is pretty incredible, right? So, I mean, we're starting to see this consistent, you know, up and down, but a consistent to the upside. And taking a look at SCHD has not been performing as well. It's actually only, uh, it's not even up, it's down 4% this year. But if we take a look from the peak to trough, uh, which it peaked around the beginning of 2022, it's only down about 11.33%. Whereas VOO, if we take a look at that peak, I mean, it's still down about, you know, 12 to 13%, but take into consideration that SCHD over the last year has been paying a 3.5% yield. So it is outperforming uh, the S&P if we take a look at the longer period of time, but we'll see how that goes moving forward. And on the Canadian side of the border, again, really great performance. XIC is up 6.3%. Uh, again, long performance since the peak to trough, it's only down 6%. So definitely outpacing in the short term, the S&P. And then of course, VDY here, my more favored, uh, favorited uh, component Canadian dividend stock, which is up 4.22%. And again, uh, same sort of deal. If we take a look at the long chart from peak to trough here now, we're only down about 9.8%. But again, tap on the 4.5% dividend you're getting off this, and you're barely down at all, similar to XIC, where you're getting that 3, 3.5% dividend. So the performance of the Canadian markets in the midterm here have been much better than the US markets. That's why I think parroting these together have been doing so exceptionally well and just getting rid of some of the volatility. But I've been getting questions like this from Steve on TikTok. TikToks get a little bit more crude comments, but he says, please get me started on the crazy tax benefits. As I mentioned, there's Canada wants you to be rich. We have incredible tax benefits. And he says, you're just talking TFSAs, right? No, I mean, we have our tax advantage accounts, your TFSAs, your RRSPs, which I love mentioning that the RRSP, if you buy US dividend stocks in here, you don't pay any over the border withholding tax. And a TFSA, you don't pay any capital gains tax, you don't pay any dividend income tax, just the over the border 15% withholding if you're buying US dividend stocks. So I try and proponently buy SEHD within this tax sheltered account, right? So that's some of the good benefits. I mean, TFSA, RSP, 
quickest way to get rich in Canada. I mean, you need to max these accounts out as soon as possible. And you can see some of the dividend income here. You know, I'm making $1,579 projected out uh, with the next check coming in June. It should be right around $400. But I think it's important to point out that the reason it's so easy to get rich in Canada, you know, investing is in regular brokerage accounts. You also get crazy tax benefits. Like if you want to avoid some of the dividend tax, you could just buy companies like Berkshire Hathaway or Canadian growth companies like Shopify or Canadian growth ETF that doesn't pay as high of a yield. But when you go to actually draw against those shares and sell them, the capital gains are only taxed on 50% of them. So you make 50% of the gains, 100% tax free, and then the other 50% will just be taxed at your nominal income bracket rate. So if there's a year where you're not making as much income, pull some gains against your, your investments. I mean, so this is one way. And then let's talk about the other tax benefits on Canadian dividend stocks. If a Canadian company, again, not talking about REITs, but if a Canadian company makes 50% of their revenue in Canada, you get this dividend tax credit where you only end up paying like 15% tax on the dividends. They're called eligible, uh, it's an eligible dividend tax credit instead of just getting taxed at a nominal bracket rate. So this is also incredible. Like we have so many tax benefits here in Canada that it just blows my mind how little people want to invest and they always find a way to jab it. It's just like, I don't get it. it. Just people want to hold themselves back. They always just have some kind of criticism, right? Leading into the next question, how can you decide if you should invest in VDY, VEQT, VFE, and VGRO? So I'm not hugely a fan of VEQT um, or VGRO. I know they're good investments. They're just not what I personally like because, you know, investing isn't a one size fits all shoe. You're going to do what works for you. But if you want to copy my portfolio, you don't want to deal as much with the foreign investments and doing currency conversions. Those two that you mentioned, VFV, again, it's just the Canadian dollar extended version of VOO, basically. So you can buy this without converting currencies and get great exposure to the S&P 500 very simply. And you could pair it with VDY and you'd basically be replicating my portfolio very simply. But again, not the biggest fan of the Vanguard growth ETF. You know, you look at the history of this and it hasn't been as good as something like QQQ. Uh, and honestly, it seems to have similar performance to the S&P 500. Um, so, I mean, you can pick or choose. There's nothing wrong with these investments like the Vanguard All Equity ETF. If you want some more broad based exposure, again, these aren't the worst investments. Pick what works for you. We're all not the same, right? Which leads into the last question where Johnny was saying, I was looking at your portfolio and noted two thirds of your portfolio is traded in American dollars, but you're Canadian, right? I'm curious as to the best and cheapest way to regularly buy stocks in the US dollar. And since it seems you must have to do that, what is the way you get American dollars into your investment account? So as mentioned, when you open up a TFSA or an RSP, you can tell them that you want a US investment account within that umbrella. So in my TFSA, I have a Canadian and US account, and I can convert the currency right within that account. So I transfer Canadian dollars to my TFSA, within the TFSA I can convert it to USD, and then buy you know, VOO or the investments I want. However, most people don't want to do this because it comes with fees and you can now buy most US companies in the Canadian dollar version uh, using CDRs. I know there's a lot of CDR versions of things like Apple and Tesla and Microsoft and all those companies. Or again, you could just buy things like VFE, which for most people I think is the best thing you could possibly do. Because for me, I make US income. My job brings me literal wire payments from the US and I don't want to have to completely pay fees to convert it to Canadian dollars. So what I do is I leave it in US dollars and then I and then in turn invest it in a US dollar account. So I'm not paying any conversions. Now, if you want to take advantage of US investments, I really recommend if you're going to convert currency, just do it in your RSP. Every year when you donate or contribute money to your RSP, right then and there, just convert it to US dollars and invest in US dividend stocks like SCHD. It's a really great way um, of taking advantage of not paying foreign withholding getting some direct US dollar exposure. Uh, it's one way of doing it nonetheless. Or again, if you want to avoid dividends, taxes, the whole jazz of US stocks, just buy US growth stocks or something like Berkshire Hathaway. But I hope uh, I offered some clerical insight today and I appreciate you guys as always. And I look forward to catching you in the next one.